It's a firefly night. When the moon is high and the stars are bright, Daddy tells me it's a firefly night. I hop off the porch. I feel the air warming my legs and messing my hair. Grass tickles my toes. I zip through the yard, chasing fireflies. Gotcha! To put in my jar. Fireflies shimmer. One, two, Three, four, five. My jar is like a light bulb that's just come alive. Fireflies glimmer, all of them glow. I race to show Daddy their dancing light show. Flickering quicker, they sparkle and shine. I love catching fireflies, but they are not mine. I take one gently out of the jar. My hand is a cage for one tiny star. Uncurling my hand, easy and slow. I whisper, goodbye, then I let it go. Soon, many fireflies open their wings. They flitter and flutter, soar over my swings. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Drift through moonlight. Five, four, three, two, one. Blink in the night. We walk back to the house. I hold Daddy's hand tight. Will tomorrow, I ask, be a firefly night? On hot summer days, fireflies rest in tall grass or on the leaves of plants and trees. They like to fly around between dusk and midnight when the air is damp and cool. Fireflies range in size from one fifth inch to one inch in length. Although commonly called a firefly or lightning bug, this insect is really a beetle. Fireflies need moist habitats. They are found around swampy and grassy areas, often at the edge of creeks, streams, and ponds. 
The firefly grows in stages, from egg to larva to adult insect. Some larvae give off light. When that happens, people call them glowworms. Because they live only three to four weeks, most adult fireflies do not eat. A female firefly will lay up to 500 eggs on the underside of leaves, in moss, or in water. Scientists believe fireflies light up in rhythmic patterns to attract mates or to warn one another about dangers. Farmers and gardeners love fireflies because the larvae eat many snails, slugs, and other pests. There are over 2,000 firefly species. Jack built. This is the bee box, made of painted wood that stands in the shade of the yard. are the honeybees that live in the special box that stands in the yard. These are the flowers that feed the honeybees that fly in and out of the hive in a box. This is the sweet nectar that feeds the queen and the other bees that live in the bee box that stands in the yard. This is the golden honey made by the thousands of busy bees that work inside the dark shelter that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who keeps bees as a hobby, gathering honey from the bee box that stands in the yard. This is the honey pot filled with fresh honey produced by the worker bees that live in the hive that stands in the yard. And this is the mommy who drinks tea with honey while her children snack on bread and sweet, gooey honey. This is the honeycomb made by the worker bees that is collected from the hive that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who likes to eat raw honey and comb with slices of tart green apple. Delicious. 
This is the beeswax made into candles that are scented with honey that is collected from the hive that stands in the yard. And this is the mommy who lights the candles, then says a prayer of thanks. This is the cough syrup made with golden honey that comes from the hive in a box that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who spoons the medicine so his child will sleep better. This is the yogurt mixed with honey that comes from the bee box that stands in the yard. And this is the grandma who offers her grandchildren sweet honey yogurt for breakfast. Here is the whole family, thankful to the bees for the candles, for the golden honey, for the cough syrup, for the beeswax, and for pollinating the flowers. Thank you, honey bees. Little girl, big dream. The story of Olympian Samantha Peshik. Little Samantha Peshik loved gymnastics. More than toys, even more than ice cream. And that's saying something. When she was just five years old, she watched the Olympics for the first time with her mom and dad. Of course, her favorite part was the gymnastics competition. She loved the way the athletes moved on the floor, the vault, the uneven bars, and the balance beam. It was right then and there that Samantha had a dream, a big dream. I'm going to be an Olympian, she shouted. Her mom and dad said, dream big, Samantha. You can accomplish anything you set your mind to. Samantha thought, to be an Olympian, I must be the very best gymnast out there. So Samantha practiced and dreamed and practiced and dreamed and practiced and dreamed some more. She even had her mom help her hang the word dream up in her room so she would never forget her big plan to be the very best. In her room, she would close her eyes and pretend to compete in front of the world just like the Olympians on TV. She told everyone she met about this dream. I'm going to be an Olympic gymnast someday. She told her teacher, her neighbor, kids at the park, 
her coaches, <laughs> the grocer. And that means I have to be the best. She'd let them all know. The more Samantha practiced, the better she got. She soon found she was great at all of the events, except for one, the balance beam. She would climb onto the beam, put her arms in the air, take a deep breath, bend her knees to jump, and then... Nothing. For some reason, she was too afraid to do it. This made Samantha very upset. <laughs> I couldn't do it, Mom. I have to be the best. <laughs> or else I won't be able to go to the Olympics. <laughs> Samantha's mom looked at her and said, You have to have the bad days to appreciate the good days. Dream big, Samantha. You can accomplish anything you set your mind to. She remembered that when she went to bed at night, staring at the word dream on her wall. I can accomplish anything. I won't give up, no matter what. That meant it was time to keep trying at that scary balance beam. And with the help of her new coach, Peter, she finally overcame her fears. With Peter's coaching and her parents' love, Samantha felt unbeatable. Next stop, nationals. Or so she thought. When it was time to compete for her big chance, Samantha made a couple mistakes. She didn't make the team and became an alternate. Samantha was very upset again. Two little mistakes made her feel like one big failure. I'm so mad I didn't win. She mumbled on her drive home that day. Her parents looked at her and said, We don't love you because you win. We love you because we love you. Dream big, Samantha. You can accomplish anything you set your mind to. Samantha kept practicing and dreaming and practicing and dreaming and practicing some more. Finally, the day came. The day she had dreamed about since she was five years old. She made the Olympic team! She was all set to compete and be the very best when something terrible happened. Ah. While practicing right before the competition, Samantha hurt her ankle. Oh no! Samantha was very upset. And then she remembered her mom and dad's words. I have to have the bad days to appreciate the good days. I'm not loved because I win. I'm loved because I'm me. Maybe being the very best doesn't always mean winning the gold medal after all, Samantha thought. Maybe being the very best me today means supporting my team. Samantha cheered on her teammates during their floor routines. You can do it! She cheered them on during all of their routines. Yeah! Dream big, she told them. Yeah! You can accomplish anything you set your mind to, she said. Woo! And they did. Woohoo! Even with her hurt ankle, she was able to compete in the uneven bars, and it was her best routine ever. She stood on the Olympic podium and was awarded a silver medal. 
she watched as everyone cheered for her and for her team. Today, Samantha coaches kids just like you and reminds them to keep dreaming, keep practicing, and keep supporting each other. Do you have a dream like Samantha? The Farmer In the village, everyone is resting. Everyone? Not Paul. water. Watches, inspect, checks. Finally, everything begins to grow. Then everything becomes dry. There is not one drop of water for Paul's plants. Paul despairs. But Paul 
is not alone. And his friend the rain is never truly far away. Mayfly. <laughs> Near the bank of the river, one warm spring day, a new life began, and her name was May. Hmm. Mama held May in a warm, tender hug, then said goodbye to her sweet baby bug. You have your whole life, a day, perhaps more. Don't waste it, May. Use your wings and explore. Her delicate wings were feathery light. With a flit and a flutter, May took off in flight. There was so much to see and so much to know. But a dangerous thing was lurking below. <laughs> it was big. It was hungry. It needed to eat. A newly hatched mayfly would make a great treat. Disguising its dark and deceitful sneer, it pleasantly said, Come closer, my dear. I have something here that you really must see, but you're too far away. Come closer to me. A voice inside her warned, May, don't go! But May didn't listen and swooped down too low. It sprang from the water, and that's when May saw... two rows of sharp teeth and a menacing jaw. It snapped its mouth tight to gobble up May. But she ducked and she darted and somehow got away. <laughs> May found safety in the hollow of a tree. She covered her eyes and tried not to breathe. Her body shuddered at the thought of trout. I'll stay here forever. I'm not coming out. But when her heart slowed, May heard a sweet sound. Mm -hmm. Peeking out slowly, she looked all around. Mm -hmm. A robin nearby gave a cheerful tweet then flew to her babies with something to eat. The mist on the river was a fine pink cloak. A bullfrog bellowed his morning croak. May noticed the beauty of a web in the sun. 
the glittering silk the spider had spun. Mama was right. There's so much to see. I can't live my life inside this tree. So May launched herself from the dark, hollow place. A greeting from the sun put a smile on her face. Mm. May followed the river along as it flowed. She saw cattails swaying and a stubby toad. And bounding along without a care, two cubs following Mama Bear. There were bluebells in clusters offering up for Hummingbird a cool drink from their cups. A newborn fawn on wobbly knees. And then in a clearing, May could see. A singing, dancing jamboree. A wild mayfly jubilee. Joining in, May danced with glee. The day rambled on and shadows grew long. Nature was singing its afternoon song. May floated along on a warm, gentle breeze, when faintly she heard a desperate plea. With shaky wings, she followed the sound, but May stopped cold at what she found. Snagged in a mess, his body still, the only movement from his gill. May inched closer, slow, unsure. Afraid again, he'd lunge at her. The trout was weak, no flip or flail. Tangled line had caught his tail. May's eyes lingered on Trout's jaw. But this time, there was more she saw. The snag had taken all Trout's fight, yet his colors shimmered in the light. Rainbow stripes in every hue. Silver, pink, and shades of blue. May saw a scar where once he'd fought to keep himself from being caught. And when her gaze met Trout's scared eyes, we're not so different, May then realized. The fear she had felt, May now forgot, and she quickly started on the knot. The knot so tight. Her progress slow. But then, at last, the line let go. The river carried Trout away. May wondered, will he be okay? The silence was broken with a startling splash. Scanning the river, May saw a flash. Breaking the surface and catching the light, Trout flipped his tail and waved good night. on 
the wind that blew. Two simple, precious words. Thank you. Her spirits matching the river's glow. May settled in for the nighttime show. Crickets and bullfrogs played their sweet tune, while fireflies twinkled beneath the full moon. The stars came out early for sweet little May. She counted each one, then called it a day. The Finding Free Fun. Written by Yogi Roth. Illustrated by Roxanne Rainville. Zane loved going on adventures with his dad. After a particularly great day, Zane wondered, Dad, what made today so perfect? His dad smiled. Well, what did we do? We played at the beach, Zane guessed. Hmm, that's true. But we also had free fun. Zane asked, Free fun? What's that? I didn't see free fun anywhere. Well, it's a magical thing. But, Zane's dad paused, I can't tell you where it is. You'll have to find it on your own. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Zane got a determined look in his eyes. Tomorrow, he would find free fun. The next morning, Zane jumped out of bed. As he got dressed, he wondered if free fun would be short or tall, yellow or green. He started exploring. He looked behind his bookshelf inside his toy chest Could it, uh, and through every drawer. Oh, maybe over. He searched his whole house and couldn't find free fun anywhere. <sighs> hmm, it must be outside. Zane rode his bike all over town. He scanned the neighborhood pool. Free fun? and looked under bushes in the park. How about, uh, he investigated every playground slide. Hello. Free fun was good at hiding. He wondered where else he could look. <gasps> the forest. He zoomed home and begged his dad to go on a hike. They walked deep in the woods explored echoing caves, and climbed up a perilous peak. But Zane was too busy searching to enjoy the view. Free fun was nowhere in sight. As his dad tucked him in that night, Zane sighed. Oh, I can't find free fun anywhere. His dad smiled and said, <laughs> Keep looking, Zane. Zane worried that he might never find free fun. The stars twinkled outside his window as he drifted off to sleep. Huh. 
Zane woke up, buzzing with energy. Aha! He had remembered something his dad once told him. Every answer in life can be found while looking at waves. Of course! Free fun was at the ocean! He grabbed his surfboard and raced to the beach with his dad. <laughs> they paddled away from shore and scanned the horizon. The wind began to blow. The water swelled. Zane spotted the perfect wave. That must be it, he shouted. Free fun is in the barrel of that wave. Zane's dad pushed him forward just as the wave began to crest. He stood up. His excitement turned to fear as he felt the power of the ocean. He panicked and fell backwards under the crashing waves. But underwater, it was calm. Zane opened his eyes. He saw seahorses dance, schools of fish shimmer, and a sea turtle cruise through the brilliant blue water. It felt like time was moving in slow motion. He floated peacefully, taking in the moment. Zane burst to the surface and exclaimed, I found it, Dad! I found free fun! That's awesome, buddy. Where was it? asked his dad. Zane sang out, Free fun isn't in one place. It's everywhere. You just have to slow down to see it. You're exactly right. It's in a quiet moment under the waves. It's in the wind blowing through your hair on a bike ride. And it's in the colors of a beautiful mountain sunset. You just have to pause, take a long, deep breath, and be where your feet are. As they walked home, Zane took in the salty ocean air. Hmm. Listen to the waves crash in the distance. And felt the sand between his toes. <laughs> Free fun was all around. Shells, a pop-up book of wonder. Shells glimmer in summer sunshine. They inspire curiosity and wonder. A shell found on a beach is the hard outer covering left after an ocean animal dies or moves out. Some beach sand is made of tiny bits of shells. Calcium is the substance that makes most seashells hard. Their varying sizes, shapes and colours delight and intrigue. Many shells shimmer and change colours in different light. This is called iridescence. Nautilus shells form in tight walls. Snail shells spiral in many sizes and colours. Beneath the waves, animals are protected by shells. A 
hermit crab protects its soft body by moving into an empty shell. Some shells blend in with sand, rocks and plants to help the animal hide. Decorator crabs attach live plants or animals to their shells for camouflage. These hard coverings don't always provide safety from predators. Grouper fish have crushing teeth plates for eating shelled animals such as crabs. Powerful jaw muscles help some sea turtles eat clams, crabs and conchs. An octopus has a short, hard beak to crunch on crabs and other shelled animals. Vibrant coral reefs showcase many shells. Reefs are formed as shell-like coverings encase tiny animals called coral polyps. Coral reefs are home to about 25% of the ocean's plant and animal species. Coral reefs are at risk of destruction by climate change, fishing, pollution and other causes. Sometimes a surprise glistens inside. A pearl found inside a giant clam in the Philippines weighed 75 pounds, 34 kilograms. Pearls are made when an oyster forms layers of hard matter over injured tissue or an irritant. Only one in about every 10,000 oysters in the wild contain a pearl. From sandy shore to deep ocean floor, shells fascinate. Made these waffles in the sand. Crisscross, zigzag in the sand. Some are deep, some are shallow, some are wide, and some are narrow. I run, I jump, I skip. I'm looking for the waffle maker. Whoopee! I look up and wonder, did the waffles fall from a whipped cream cloud in the blueberry sky? Look what I found. Waffles melting under the yellow buttery sun covered with salty syrupy sea. I twirl and spin around. Guess what I see? The waffle maker was me. I made the waffles in the sand. Botanical pop-up book. Every flower 
begins as a bud. Their blooms produce seeds, which root into sprouts. Spring brings rain and warmer weather, which encourages plants to produce flowers. While all flowers share the same humble beginnings, they come in a stunning range of brilliant hues and exceptional shapes. Annual plants have bright, showy blossoms that last a single season. Perennial plants survive many years and tend to have smaller flowers. Many peony and poppy flowers open in sunlight, closing at night and on cloudy days. Jasmine flowers release their fragrance after the sun sets to attract nighttime pollinators. Some flowers have special colors and scents to attract bees for pollination. Bees turn nectar into honey to feed the colony. Many species of bees are endangered due to climate change, habitat loss, disease, and pesticides. Sweet floral nectar feeds tiny animals and insects. In return, they share their dusty gifts of pollen with other plants. Birds can drink up to two times their body weight in nectar a day. When butterflies land on flowers, pollen is transferred to and from their legs. More than 300 species of fruit depend on bats for pollination. Flowers produce fruits and seeds after pollination. Critters deposit fruit seeds in new areas through their droppings. Some seeds are airy enough to flit in the wind. Others are carefully armored for years. Every fruit starts as a flower, but not every flower produces fruit. While some flowers grow on land, others flourish in water. Aquatic plants nurture wildlife by filtering water, creating oxygen, and providing shelter. Plants that grow in water often have flexible stems that either float freely or reach into the soil below. Life is enriched by flowers in many ways. With purpose and beauty, they help nature survive and thrive.
It's a seashell day. When the sun peeks up over the bay, Mommy tells me it's a seashell day. I rush down the path over the dune. Salty breeze blows. We'll be there soon. We reach the beach. Herring gulls flock. Is this a seashell? No, it's a rock. With pail and shovel in my hand, my toes squish in cool, wet sand. A wave rolls in. It's way too big. Go away, wave, so I can dig. Bumpy, lumpy shells out from the muck. Spiny, shiny shells. A penny for luck. My shell is tiny, a silvery pearl. Mommy's is brown with a big, twirly curl. This shell is a home, Mommy tells me. Let's put it back to live in the sea. This shell has a secret. Hold it up to your ear. Listen, says Mommy. What do you hear? I hear the ocean. I count shells. One, two, three, four. Each one is different. I have many more. I count other shells. Five, six, seven, eight. My shells are curvy, never straight. Two more shells, numbers nine, then 10. When we get home, let's count them again. We're almost home. It's been a fun day. So many shells. I'll make a display. One, two, three, four. A pretend seashell store. Five, six, seven, eight. All my shells look really great. Nine and ten, both from the sea. I brought the beach home with me. Mollusks are animals with soft bodies that wear their skeletons on the outside. Seashells. Every empty seashell on the beach was once a part of an animal from the mollusk family. Seashells are mostly made of calcium. So are our bones. The best time to find seashells on the beach is in the morning or evening at low tide. Scallops have dozens of eyes to help them see predators coming from any direction. Seashells can be as small as a grain of rice, 
or as big as four feet across. There are more than 100,000 species of mollusks worldwide. About half of all mollusks live in the ocean. A seashell wraps around a mollusk's body like a suit of armor. It protects the sea creature living inside from predators and strong ocean currents undersea. Hermit crabs crawl into empty seashells and call them home. As hermit crabs grow bigger, they have to find larger and larger shells. Many clams breathe through a kind of snorkel, a body part called a siphon, when they bury themselves in sand. Shells have been used throughout history for art, jewelry, money, tools, containers, and buttons. The end. Little Princess makes a splash. Part 1. The Bathing Suit Little Princess Little Princess runs. Little Princess runs to the park. Little Princess goes in. And out of the locker room. Little Princess runs fast, in and out, and all about, in her bathing suit. Where is she going? Little Princess is going to the wading pool. Part two, the pool. <laughs> Little princess is ready. Little princess puts on her swim cap. Her friends are in the pool. Everybody is waiting for Little Princess to jump in. Ready? One, two, three. Jump!
Little Princess and her friends swim and splash. Happy. <laughs> they shout, Happy Swim Day! The end. An ocean ABC primer. <laughs> A is for anemone. Whoa. B is for barracuda. For clownfish. <laughs> D is for dolphin. E is for eel. Is for flounder. Whoa. G is for giant squid. H is for hermit crab. is for ice fish. J is for jellyfish. <laughs> K is for kelp. For lobster, Whoa. M is for manatee. N is for narwhal. <laughs> he is for puffer fish. <laughs> Q is for Queen Kong. R is for Reef. <laughs> T is for tide pool. U is for urchin. V is for viper fish. For whale. <laughs> X is for 
Zephasura. Y is for Yellowfin Tuna. Z is for Zebra Shark. that are definitely not an octopus. Here are 14 animals I found. There are many animals here, but I am sure of one thing. None of these animals are an octopus. This flamingo? Definitely not an octopus. And this couldn't be an octopus, because it is a fox. Here comes a snail that is certainly not an octopus. Is this an octopus? No, it's just a little snake. No octopus here, just a camel. And this is for sure an ostrich. Nothing else. Here is a rhino. It's not an octopus either. And this is just a squid. Definitely a squid. I am very sure this is a regular squirrel and not an octopus. And here is a frog. Definitely just a frog. This isn't an octopus, it's a giraffe. And this is totally a monkey, not an octopus. Psst. see this praying mantis? I'm positive it's not an octopus. And this porcupine. Actually, this porcupine looks a little funny. I think it might be... It is! It is an octopus! In fact, all of the animals were an octopus in disguise. Go back and look for eight arms and two eyes. Under the sea. One, two, three. Let's follow our friends under the sea. As we count together. One, two, three. One big whale with a smile on his face. Two seahorses floating in place. Three 
three happy turtles swimming on their way. Four little crabs love to dance and play. Five starfish yellow like the sun. Counting in the sea is always lots of fun. One, two, three, four, five. your body in motion each and every day. Can you scurry like a crab? Sway like a starfish? Like a seagull looking for a fish? <laughs> Swim like a dolphin? Whee! Slither like an eel? Run like an alligator hungry for a meal? Can you waddle like a penguin? Flip, flop, flop! Slide like a seal? Clap, clap, clap! Dance like a lobster? Turtle, correct? Wiggle like an octopus taking a step? On this hot and sunny day, we're ready for a swim. Move along with us and jump right in. <laughs> Splash! <laughs> If you don't have books, what are you waiting for? It's a kid-safe, ad-free library full of storybooks that are brought to life. Ask your grown-up and start exploring more fun stories like these. Seriously, you have to check it out. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.